Y'all gotta help me find all the Ziggy stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, you're just getting out the way? Okay. That's great. And y'all made a mess. Who's gonna do this up? 70 DBI, I think. If we. Oh shit! All right, now let's, I'm gonna see if we can get this to pair. Let's see if we can do some Zigbee over here. From way over there, probably behind those trees. Line you can see there, and I have an antenna set up. Let's see if we can do the Zigbee thing on a battery powered Zigbee stick. What all did we use? And no, this isn't this type of channel. This was one of those little stupid little, I guess, well, maybe not too stupid, but reading lamps. I was trying to see if I could get this to fool the battery pack to see if it would pull enough juice, but it didn't work out. And yeah, this is just something I got free something. I don't remember so long ago. So this is the little battery pack I got free in Google Fi, whatever you want to call them, Fi Foam. And oh, maybe that's a new commercial for them. But no, they're not sponsoring or nothing. But it was just whatever battery pack. So that was the power source. Now, one thing I did want to talk about is the different antennas. Because this is a whole different soapbox and I have time in the video for this but this is most of the antennas you'll find they're RPSMA and what does that mean is if you look at the connector and you'll notice the pin is missing and that's reverse polarity SMA and the real polarity or normal polarity you can see it has the pin and in all the fun that they thought it was just just such a good idea of hey no one's going to make these connectors and we'll just put reverse polarity on all the routers and no one will be able to put antennas on them and well now that's all you can find is a stupid rpsma antennas because people put them on wi-fi routers well, luckily, Zigstar is using the RPSMA on their coordinators. And yeah, this is the little ZZH Electrolama, and you'll notice the difference on these two. Is this is the Zigstar here, this is the ZZH. He's not using the reverse polarity. So if I put these antennas together, then they just well, come back. If I put these antennas together, well then, that's what kind of things would happen is they wouldn't make continuity. They do make adapters and you can put the adapters to go from reverse polarity to normal polarity, etc. So just be mindful of that if you're doing this in your matrix and your testing of fake areas like I did. So luckily I, had, I was able to just take this little alpha antenna in the words or the way that the directional is i think this is like a 7 db game and so i was able just to screw it on here that gave me my router that was directional and then i was able to plug it into the power source like so the only thing i had to do is i had to keep pushing the button to keep the power going and this gave me a mobile router for doing all the zigbee testing now of course if i would have given it a decent normal mains powered device like say i did later with a laptop and whatnot then it just stays alive now what did i use for coordinator well i had a little docker container that i spun up of zigbee to mqtt it's the one i use to do my motion sensor testing and what i did here was just take a poe adapter and this poe adapter you can get them on amazon or whatever and they're fairly cheap i think this one i did grab for poe plus yeah it's up to four amps because i wanted to be able to do a um like say a pi 4 or whatever and have enough amps this is poe plus it does 802.3 at so cool stuff there and basically i really didn't need it for this of course 
is threaded Ethernet with PoE. So then it splits out data and power. It goes to USB-C. Yay for that. USB-C is the bomb. And then it goes to Ethernet. And then, of course, I took the antenna off. We want to show you inside. This is that Zigstar deal. And it just pops on to a little wireless tag ESP32. And it has that Zigbee chipset inside. Really stupid compact what he's done here. So what did I use for antenna on this side, right? So what did I do? Well, let's zoom out. Of course, went on Amazon and found me a high gain directional antenna with a mount that I could put on the roof, right? This is a 15 dB gain, or I guess maybe it's DBI. Uh, yeah, DBI, I've probably been saying that wrong. I'm sure someone will roast me in the comments, which you're welcome to do that because of course, you know, the whole machine likes all the good roasting. That's why people do that on those channels, by the way. But that's a whole nother deal. Maybe we'll make another video about that one day and someone will hate on mine and give me comments. But, so I did this and mounted it on my little ADS-B antenna up on the house temporarily. The only thing I didn't like about this, it had this RG58 coax. And I'm like, really? RG58 for 2.4 gigahertz? That's gonna suck. Well, I was skeptical of that. And it, cause it, look how much it has. I was hoping to find one that wasn't too cheap or, you know, bad, but I found this one, which was decent. Okay. I guess it's made in Russia better than, I guess you've made in China ones maybe. And it had the whole RP SMA as well. So I could just screw it right in, but it had a long ass thing of coax. I wish they would have just had like a, they had some other ones that had an N connector on it. And that would have been great. I could have just done an end connector to SMA and not have all this loss of coax. But I, it worked out, as you see. And this is, you know, RPSMA to RPSMA. And it screws right in. I have my coordinator, plugged in my Ethernet, PoE. I was good to go and I mounted it up. And, well, that's all there is to it. There's tons of ways you can do this. This was just one way I did it and uh, it was pretty fun. Be sure and do it in the matrix in, in a totally fake deserted area like I did because you don't want to upset anybody that has any type of rules for um, RF transmission. So one of the threads on the Z-Stack firmware, and if you don't know what that is, it's the firmware that is for a lot of the Texas instrument chipsets that run your Zigbee coordinators and routers, etc. for doing ZHA, Zigbee to MQTT, etc. And it's more kind of open source. I know Kony compiles that for us and it makes it all nice and we just throw it on our stuff and go and forget about it, right? Well, there in one of the threads they talked about the higher output and there was that PTVO firmware. And well, I did kind of go through and see some of this stuff and I kind of guessed on some other things in here and it allows you to go in and pick some of your cool little own little things you want to do with your own firmware. And I wanted to make a router that was full power so I could put it on a little directional panel antenna. What I did right through here was I did pin seven. You'll see in the video, a little green LED, it flickers every once in a while. I was trying to get it to pull enough power to fool the battery pack to stop going to sleep. And you'll see in the video, I keep pushing the button sometimes. That's how I got to keep the battery pack alive. But hey, that this just stuff just doesn't pull a lot of power and it thinks it was going to sleep. I did do the internal temperature source voltage. You'll see those in the dashboard that also dumps to Zigbee to MQTT, which in turn can go to home assistant if you like. Now, I also did the switch. And you'll see the little switch I start to toggle. That's the red LED on this coordinator. And it actually goes to Zigbee to MQTT and also goes to Home Assistant, which is very cool that you can turn something on and off. There's all kinds of stuff you can do in this firmware. I'll leave the link down below. You can go play around with it and do your thing. But it don't mess up something because let me show you something real quick. Yeah, I always say I'm quick, but I'm not. Is you see this part right here? 
it says enable SBL. Make sure every single time that you make a firmware that it has this SBL set up correctly for your board. The one I was using, pin 15, is most likely the one for your board. Look in the ZStack GitHub. They have the list usually of all the different pins of all the different things. But this would suck if you put a firmware on without the bootloader enabled because, yeah, that you just would have been flash it again unless you JTAG it. And then you need to have the pin thing for that. So you can go in here and set your own manufacturer, manufacturer name. I was just goofing off. And then you can even do your cool little icon and then you can pick a little JPEG, PNG file. Pretty cool, it dumps it straight into Zigbee to MQTT. Then you can even make your little custom converter and put that into Zigbee to MQTT as well. And you'll see that it doesn't pop up as an unsupported device because I just stuck it in my Zigbee to MQTT folder and picked it up and you'll see my little icon logo thing as well. So pretty simple stuff. I haven't messed with it a whole lot, so I'm not going to go through everything in it. Maybe that'll be a future thing. We'll jump in and do some cool stuff making our own little Zigbee devices. So in a quick nutshell, maybe not so quick, that was how I built my full power router. That was my battery powered mobile router. And then I used VPN to tie into my home network through LTE. And that way I always had connectivity because I was getting further away than my Wi-Fi would allow. And no, go figure. And but then with Zigbee, I was able to go way down the road, which is way further than what I could do with my Wi Fi, even through some high power access points. But that's where things get different when you actually have a good antenna that's directional and can listen, and you've got high power on both sides. That's where it truly makes the difference. I know you're probably asking, why'd you, why'd you do this for? Well, Think about something where you've got a detached house and like a mother-in-law house or something like that, a barn, whatever, and you don't want to set up two Zigbee networks and then trying to manage it all. Well, you could do a link between the two of them and then link everything in that barn and just use one coordinator, one network and call it a day. So pretty cool stuff or, hey, you want to put something across the street at the neighbor's house? It's pretty simple to do. If you got any cool records that you can do with the Zigbee long range, shoot us a comment down below. I'd love to see some of the cool stuff that you're doing with Zigbee. So I appreciate all the viewers and Patreon subscribers and everything and you know the drill. Um, let me tell them something. Um, uh, like and subscribe or you will have a flood like this. <laughs> and